So we're going to start with the module five today. Okay. And unlike the first, uh, what we called modules, there, there, there's uh, material that is given to you. But for this one, I'm still preparing them. And I just uh, emailed you the one that we're going to discuss today. And for next meeting, uh, it will be a more detailed discussion. Uh, what, what we're going to do today is some sort of a very uh, short introduction, some parts, and why uh, LC or not, not LMS is what we call a uh, very useful technique. Okay, so if we're going to look at the learning objectives, this is the one that we really need to, to focus because this is the at the end of this chapter or module, what do you intend to know? So you're going to recall the fundamentals of mass spectrometry, identify the basic components of mass spectrometry and their specific fu function, and then evaluate the functions or the applications of mass spectrometry in analytical samples. So in most of the book, mass spectrometry is just part or it's just a detector of the two chromatographic techniques that we have discussed, namely HPLC and uh, GC. So LC and GC, okay? Now in some book, they try to put this as one special field that uh, need to have attention similar to chromatography, spectroscopy and electro uh, analytical chemistry, okay? So I would suggest uh, if you have not done it yet, maybe before we meet again on Tuesday to go over some of the video that was posted or whose links are posted here. So you're going to have a much more, uh, we could say understanding on what mass spectrometry is. Okay, although I, I'll try my best to explain it to you. I think it's much better if you go over the links that was posted here, especially those are uh, the one that is compiled by company like this one, Waters, okay. Uh, the one that I'm going to use next week is by a uh, material by Agilent, okay. So, what we're going to do today is just some sort of an introduction on what this technique is all about, okay? So if you're going to look at this mass spectrometry, so this is just short for MS, and usually we have an LCMS and a GCMS that we utilize, okay? In uh, what we call mass spectrometry analysis, okay? So as an introduction to you, mass spectrometry, okay, is just one of the major branches of analytical chemistry along with spectroscopy, chromatography, and electrochemistry. But I told you in some book, when they're talking about instrumentation, mass spec fell under chromatography. And mass spec is just one. What part of uh, the, uh, what component of the chromatographic instrument mass spec fell uh, into? Anyone? They usually serve as the detector, okay? So if you're going to look at the role of the mass spectrometry, it's a very good qualitative analysis. It's less useful than NMR for true unknowns, but can be applied to very small samples. And then it can also be used for quantitative analysis. Now in one of the video, it will tell you how the, the principle is spectra, in spectrometry is similar to this one, where you ionize your sample, and then uh, break them into mass and then pass through the 
detector. Okay, and you end up with this uh, reading that you are uh, what we call uh, output or signal that you have, and we can call it as mass spectra. Okay, and I, I try to cover this uh, tonight or today. Uh, uh, the thing that uh, we usually read in mass spectrometry. So if we're going to look at the mass spec, okay, it is an analytical technique for production of charged molecule species and their separation okay, by magnetic and electric fields based on mass to charge ratio. Okay. So if we're going to look at mass spectrometry, it is a very powerful analytical technique and it is widely used in science by chemists, biologists, medical researchers, and environmental and forensic scientists, among other. Okay. Uh, it is a very, oh yeah, as I, what we call, and with mass spec, we're looking at the mass of a molecule or of different fragments of molecule. Okay, so if we're going to look at the mass spectrometry, there are information that we can get. Foremost of this, we could say, is the molecular weight. Mass spectrometry, I have experience determining the molecular weight. So it can be targeted versus non-targeted. So what's the difference between the two? Anyone? Just for the sake that we uh, can engage with one another. So tingin nyo, ano yung pagkakaiba ng tinatawag nating targeted versus non-targeted? So when we talk about targeted, we know the mass to charge ions that we are looking for, okay? And usually uh, the, the, the way that we look at this is we just try to extract, okay? From the mass spectra, the mass to charge ion that we are looking for. And if we, if we have this, what we call the targeted methods, usually there are uh, uh, greater selectivity and sensitivity compared to untargeted methods, okay? Because as I mentioned earlier, you can have a quantitative and qualitative analysis. So I, I would say if it's a targeted, you're doing what? Quanti or quali? Anyone? Pag may targeted ano tayo, uh, analysis, what do you think? Is that a quantity or a quality? Okay. So usually, sabi ko, okay, quality. Uh, sabi ko nga sa inyo, the targeted methods are usually more sensitive and selective. So usually, we do it for a quantitative analysis. Now, the non-targeted is mostly like we could say qualitative because you're trying to, let's say, determine the molecular weight. You can also use mass spec to, to determine the number of specific elements based on the isotope, isotope peaks, okay? And if you, what we could try to determine the molecular formula, you can use a high resolution mass spec, okay? And the way that they usually do this thing is they have this reproducible uh, fragment patterns. And here they, they get clues from the functional group or the uh, arrangement of compounds or to confirm uh, the so-called compound identity. Now the instrument that we have, okay, uh, that contains a uh, mass spectrometry or mass spectro, uh, spectrometry as the detector is the mass spectrometer. 
And if you're going to look at what does the mass spectrometer do, it measures the mass, but this is in terms of M over C. What do you think is the C here? Okay, we look at the mass to charge ratio. That's the one that you look, okay, when you determine this mass, uh, mass spectrometer, or when you use this mass spectrometer. So it is better than any other technique. And since it is better than any other technique, what do you think is the cost for this? You think this is cheap? Okay. So since this is what we call uh, um, uh, uh, a better technique to measure the mass, okay, it, it is usually expensive. Okay. And the <clears throat> unique pictures that it has, aside from measuring the mass, it can give you information about chemical structure. And I, 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 I would say I, I'm lucky to, to do both uh, technique or functions of a mass spectrometer. I use it for quantitative purpose, and I also use it for uh, structure elucidation purpose, okay? So if we're going to look at the unique features of mass spectrometry, I hope I can say, I, I, I can uh, put here at least what, four. So you have there the molecular specificity, which you can use, okay, to, uh, determine quantitatively okay, a certain analyte in your sample. And then the detection sensitivity is what makes it a better technique in measuring the mass. Another uh, features that we can look at it is the so-called versatility and wide applicability. So in the succeeding slide, I will show you some of the stuff where the mass spec is usually utilized, okay? And last but not the least is the analysis. It can analyze complex samples, okay? Now, if you're going to look at what are mass measurements good for, so you can identify metabolites, synthetic organic chemicals, peptides, proteins, recombinant uh, proteins, oligonuclides, polymers, uh, drug candidates, just to name a few of them. Okay. You can also include that there's some complexes. So these are just some of the sample that can be analyzed or used for uh, GCMS. And if you're going to look at this application, this is really wide range. Now, my question, is this the first time you heard this term, mass spectrometry? First time you batong narinig? Okay, so I'm happy if this is not the first time. So that means it, it's really familiar to you now. And if I'm not mistaken, okay, during the time when I was there in the Philippines, I, I know there are three mass spec system. And I know where all of them, all of them are in what? UP campuses. So you have one in UP Diliman, Okay, under Dr. Junio, Yas Junio, then you have UP Manila under Dr. Hilario, and you have there in UPLB, but it is in 
Are you familiar with the Pascual lab there? And saan ba yung tinatawag? Yung papuntang biotech? Is that APEC? So that's under uh, Dr. Padolina, the, the younger one. Isagani. Okay. And I'm not sure if the IC, UPLB, will push through in purchasing uh, their own mass spec. I think Dr. Completo and Dr. Nakario are planning to have one. Did you heard anything about it? I think it, those in 140, you have Dr. Completo as your teacher, right? Yes. Yeah. Are they in 140? And I can sure. huh? Not sure pa. Ang tanong, lagi pa bang brown out dyan? Because it's really hard to have an instrument like this if the structure of power is not stable. When I say structure of power, electric grid na meron tayo sa campus. Okay? So I hope it's not still the same. I remember when Dr. Migo hosted me in 2018, the first time I reported to her, uh, it was brown out. <laughs> so I'm hoping it's not uh, that thing at this time, okay? So one aspect of this, or one application of this mass spectrometry is this so-called pharmaceutical analysis. So why do it, what, what do you think is Pascual Lab is all about? Anong ginagawa ng Pascual? Ano bang product nila? Okay. Usually, they are in pharmaceutical industry, right? Sa pharma. And if I'm not mistaken, what Dr. Padulina, together with Dr. Completo, uh, are doing, they're trying to optimize the condition okay, for those so-called botanical plants that has uh, medicinal properties. Okay? So they, they, they try to extract from those medicinal plants, yung tinatawag nating compounds na merong therapeutic uh, application. Okay? So, if we're going to look at the main applications of mass spec in pharmaceutical analysis, uh, I, I think number one dito is yung drug discovery. That's why I put this slide here. So usually you have what a candidate compounds. You can do a combinatorial laboratories, natural products, or we could say diversity collection. So I think this is what the Pascual Lab are doing there. Okay, I, 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 I'm asking you this, or if in case you don't know, because this can be part of some of you as your BS thesis. So the way that they got, they're trying to do there is they try to optimize yung planting conditions or yung conditions para magkaroon ng optimal growth yung mga medicinal plants or botanical plants. Okay? So the way that they do is they, they, they look at the compound, quality control, solubility formulation. Okay? So they, they screen it. So they use mass. Okay? And they can screen it maybe versus RNA or DNA or protein, okay? And then refine panel, so try to isolate them by mass and then try to do activity in them, okay? And then they will try to what we call characterize what it is, okay? So among the study that they have here, the bio, uh, bio, abilities, uh, bio availability studies, drug metabolism studies, pharmacokinetics, characterization of potential drugs, drug degradation product analysis, okay? the screening of drug candidates, and then identifying drug candidates. Are you familiar with Lipitor? Have you heard the name Lipitor? Hindi ko alam kung meron yan sa 
Pilipinas. Okay? But are you familiar what it is? Ah, so hindi kayo familiar. Sorry. So sa US lang pala familiar, familiar to. Ah, uh, ano yung brand yung number one sa cholesterol dyan sa Pinas? Because Lipitor is the number one cholesterol medicine. So they, 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 they the one who, who who developed this one got a lot of money out of Lipitor. Okay? So, uh, ang ano nga dyan, uh, when you work with in pharmaceutical industry, sometimes it takes a while for you to develop that thing. It, it can range like 10 years or much longer. It, the only thing that it can be past track is if we have like a pandemic. Okay, have you heard that there's already an, an oral uh, medicine that can be used against COVID nineteen? na ba yun or nabasa niyo na? It was developed by what? Merck. Are you familiar with Merck? Now, an oral medication that was developed and I think it was uh, just approved okay, uh, by the FDA, an antiviral pill. I'm not sure if you heard molnupiravir. Have you heard the term? Mall no pila beer. Okay. And they can let, get a lot of money on that. They fast track it because of the emergency thing. And before they developed that one, I'm 100% sure that they use mass spec on that. Okay? Now, another application is biomolecular characterization. Ito yung tinatawag natin mga mix-mix. You have the proteomics and genomics. Now, you may uh, think about yourself, wait, wait, di po ba biomolecules mga to? And mass spectrometry, I think I have not said it. It is usually applicable until 1,500 grams per uh, mole. Or the way that they do it is kilodalton, some sort of. So usually mass spec is for small molecule. But how, how, how do you think it is applied in big molecule or biomolecule? Okay, so anong ginagawa nila dun sa big molecule? As you're going to look at here, so the protein is digested to break down into peptides. At yung peptides ngayon, ang ina-analyze nila in the LCMS. Okay, they look for fragment. Yep. So, titingnan nila yung fragment. So ano ba, uh, uh, pag break down pa natin yung peptides, ano yung building blocks nila? Or ano ba yung building blocks ng protein? Okay. Y yun yung tinatawag natin amino acids. Pero uh, ano dyan, yung proteinomics, genomics, if, if you want to differentiate them, may iba pang mix eh. Okay. So I think uh, I, I put these slides to, to, to tell you because ito yung uso ngayon. Okay? If some of you decided to go to graduate school and you decided to do it either there or in the U.S., ito yung parang uh, in-demand ngayon. 
Okay? Usually nga sabi namin, if you end up in pharmaceutical industry, you should get like a medicinal chemistry or a biochemistry course. Okay? Or organic chemistry or organic synthesis. Now, if you end up with biochemistry, usually this is what you end up. So, ang ano nga nito, if you're going to look at the differential research scale, so, pag nucleus ang involved, so that has something to do with oligonucleotides, okay, ang tawag natin dyan ay genomics. Now, kapag ang involved ay protein, okay, so, ang tawag natin dyan ay proteomics. Okay? And then the protein, you can break it down into fragment. Okay? And tapos, papasok rin yung metabolite. So, since fragment is uh, the peptides, ang tawag natin dyan is peptidomics. And then, if you want to look at how uh, the metabolite affects this uh, peptide, matatawag na sa yung metabonomics or kapag pepta uh, yung ano lang metabolite metabolomics okay so yan yung mga inyon mga omics thing and i think this is not the first time that you heard from this uh, this term so in, in, in all of them uh, yung role ng mass spec uh, they can determine the protein structure the function the folding and its interaction they can identify a protein from the mass of its peptide fragments. Kasi marami nang study ngayon. So parang ginawa nila kapag nag-break down into fragments, parang nagkakaroon ng signature mass to charge ratio. And they compile it into a library. So para pag nag-run ka, isa-search mo lang yung sa library. Okay? And there are what we call readily available May, meron tayong tinatawag na database. Yung, yung iba nga, free. Okay? Because I was able to, somebody, a Filipina, who's uh, doing study on Raflosia, so he asked me to analyze the mass spec that he got and try to relate it doon sa Raflosia na merong parasitic plant at Raflosia on its own. And uh, we were able to determine the difference. Okay, now you can also detect the post-translational uh, modifications throughout the complex biological mixture. You can quantitate either relative or absolute the proteins in a given sample. Pwede ka rin mag-monitor ng enzyme reaction, chemical modification, and chemical digestion. Okay. Now I remember, I think one of the things when I started doing my uh, PhD. So I, I tried to monitor the microbial activity in sludge. And I tried to compare before and after I applied a different metal and see what's the difference. And I, I was able to see that there's some fragments that come out when metal was applied and we're trying to deduce it as some stress protein that counteract the application of metal, okay? But the, the number one thing that I use in my experience, the mass spectrometry is for environmental analysis, okay? So what did I do? I determine uh, antibiotics in that type of samples okay why did we call that why did i call it like that you want to know what the samples that i have i hope you're not eating okay so i have that sludge so when you have activated sludge uh, our sample there is wastewater okay and then i also have manure so from, from cow, pig, and poultry. That's why our lab before, and Dr. Miga worked, worked on that lab also, is called the shitty lab. 
because our, our samples are just what we call the sheet samples. And I remember when I go sampling, okay, uh, with wastewater, feeling ko dumi dumi ko pagbalik ko. If you're not familiar with the wastewater, wala sa atin sa ano eh, sa yung wastewater eh. Kasi dito sa US, alam nyo yung CR dito, okay, nakakonek yan. So kapag na ano yan, pupunta yan dun sa sewage. Tapos yung pupunta dyan sa wastewater treatment plant. Tapos itretreat nila yung water na maano doon. Sa atin kasi wala, di ba? Kasi ang CR natin yung parang, ano bang tawag doon? Excavations, kanya-kanya. Okay? But here, there's a municipal wastewater treatment plant. So lahat ng ano sa CR, pupunta yung doon. Okay? So usually, I remember before, every week pumupunta ako doon, magkopulit ng sewage. Okay? I just try to determine the antibiotics. Kasi ang ano nga namin noon, yung antibiotics, hindi naman na-accumulate ng body. Eh. Most of them are excreted out. Okay? As part, as part of the waste product. So we try to determine ano yung nangyayari doon, ano yung metabolites na nag-perform. Okay? So you can use, pest, uh, use to analyze pesticides on food. Uh, soil and groundwater contamination. I, I think if, if you are in the KKP, if may access kayo dun, I would suggest that you look on this poster because those can be your uh, BS thesis in the near future. Okay. So number one problem that we see right now is the so-called perfluorinated compounds. Okay. The dioxin the endocrine disrupting compounds, yung POPs, persistent organic pollutants. And in the drinking water, we have what we call the target analysis. Okay? I don't know if somebody told you before, if you boil water, okay, if it cooled down, don't boil it again. Okay? Because you're going to have the so-called halogenated products. Why? Bakit meron tayong halogenated product? What do we use to treat water? Anyone? Ano the halogen. So what happened? They found out that if you heat the water, that chlorine will convert it to something. And if you cool it and you heat it again, that uh, converted chlorine will be converted to another chlorinated form. And usually they found it to be carcinogenic. I don't know if you heard that thing uh, before. Okay, so you can get an environmental water unknown analysis and then marine studies. And the one that I did is transformation products. So ang inaano ko, tinitinan ko, pag inapply namin sa hayop yung antibiotics, ano nangyayari sa kanya? That's why I have to work with the sheet samples. Okay? Now, uh, you can also use it in forensic. So you can perform a forensic analysis as confirmation of drug abuse. You, you know, you're familiar with sports, right? Alam niyo yung doping? How do they do that? How do they catch the cheater? who use this so-called PET. You uh, familiar ba kayo sa PET? Ano ibig sabihin yan? PED is what? Performance Enhancing Drugs. Okay? Uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar doon sa isang cyclist. For many years, hindi niya, uh, hindi siya na-detect na meron, na, na nagagamit siya ng PET. But it took, Many years. Why? Because they're still developing the technique. Kaya ma 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 mababasa mo na lang sa news yung dating mga Olympic medalists, they are being stripped of their medal. Kasi na nakita sa urine sample nila or blood sample nila yung presence ng performance enhancing drugs. And sometimes it takes years before they were able to do that because, okay, 
the improvement of the detection limit and usually mass spec plays a very important role there. You can also use mass spec to detect uh, disease biomarkers. They use it in newborn screening for metabolic diseases. So meron na silang tinatawag na biomarkers. Kapag meron kang uh, possible disease, makikita na nila yung biomarkers. So yan lang yung application. And I can tell you, give me a mass spec and I can get a lot of papers. Right now, I have a GCMS. Pero hindi maganda yung aming uh, detector na mass spec. Kasi luma na eh. But give me a new one and I can produce one paper per month using mass spec. Okay? Now, ang ano na natin ngayon is uh, we look at the main components and then next week, next meeting, uh, iaano natin sila isa-isa. Okay? About ano yung, uh, let's say, specific example na meron sila. But before we do that, so I'm going back kasi, sa, sa, sabihin natin, ano ba yung general properties ng MS? Bakit ang dami niyang application? Okay? So one general properties is, of course, the sensitivity. We can also include here the resolution and accuracy. Now, however, sensitivity, resolution, accuracy can what? Vary. Depende doon sa mass spec mo. Depende doon sa method na uh, gagamitin mo. Okay? So, usually what happened, the sensitivity go down when the mass increases. Okay? So, mas higher yung molecular mass, mas uh, mababa yung sensitivity. Okay? And then, the good thing about this is yung ion sources that we're going to discuss next week, they can generate both positive and negative ions and in some neutrals. Meron kami tinatawag dito na positive mode at negative mode. And it has something to do doon sa mass to charge. So kapag positive mode plus 1 doon sa molar mass, pag negative to minus 1 or minus a certain number. Okay? So me me meron kami usually sa uh, positive mode yung M plus uh, H. So that means plus 1. Or we could say M plus 2H. So that means plus 2 doon sa uh, molecular mass na hinahanap mo. Or meron ka rin M plus 3H. Okay. Depende doon sa mode na gagamitin mo. Okay? So if we're going to look at the main components ng tinatawag nating instrument, siguro uh, one important thing that we have here is the ionization source. But I think before that, I can include as the number one as the sample introduction. Marami akong slide about the main components dito. So when we're talking about the ionize uh, ionization source it, it, it's one that must produce ions in the gas space okay and next meeting we will going to talk about this so called ion source okay yung tinatawag na ei esi okay so so yan yung tinatawag na ionization source so, ESI is electrospray ionization. EI is electron ionization. So, we're going to talk more about this next meeting. So, th th that is part of this, what we call ionization. Okay? So, EI is electron ionization. Uh, ESI is electron uh, spray ionization. Okay? Tapos meron pa ata yung tinatawag nating APCI or CI lang. Okay, CI is chemical ionization. APCI is atmospheric pressure ionization. We're going to talk about that into details next meeting. Okay? And then we have the separation of ions. Ito yung tinatawag na 
must filter. Okay? And here, pwede da dyan pumasok yung tinatawag na time of flight, quadruple, ion trap, okay? at iba pa that we're also going to discuss uh, next time. Okay? And then we have the detection of ions. So, ito yung tinatawag na detector. Okay? So, most common instrument run in the order of one, two, and three. But additional fragmentation to different ions can occur after step two. Ito na yung pumapasok ng tinatawag na mga tandem MS. So, dalawang beses lang sila uh, uh, we can say there's, a, uh, there, 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 there's two ways for them to do the separation. So you have one, two, one, two. Okay? So the mass spec is very common as I told you, common uh, chromatography detector, chromatographic detector. So another way we can look at it is this one. So you have the sample. So what do you think is the inlet system? Ano ito din yung inlet system? So it can be LC and GC. Okay? And in the inlet system, you have to vaporize the sample. So either you use GC or LC. So usually ang ini-inject ninyo liquid eh. Okay? But in that inlet system, ang mangyari kahit... Uh, liquid chromatography yung ginagamit mo, there's a chance that it will going to be vaporized. Maybe not right away in the inlet system, but when you go to the ion source. Okay? Because in the ion source, you're going to ionize the analyte gas molecules. And then, Diyan papasok from the ion source na dyan yung mass analyzer. Okay? So, uh, uh, ang naging problem nila noon is how to interface these two going here. But once they were able to solve that, then they end up doing okay. Okay? And then we have the detector. Okay, so the detection and the quantitation of the ions. And all of these things are what we call under a vacuum system. Now you need to have the vacuum system because that's where the collision happen the collision reduction between the ions and the gas molecules. So yan yung we could say main component no mass spec. So this is very different from the one that we encounter already. Right? At dyan din determine natin yung mass. So, so pag nakuha doon sa detector, hindi determine na yung mass. So, so, so next, next thing that uh, I have here is how you uh, determine yung tinatawag nating mass spectra. Kasi yan yung parang basic ng ano eh, no mass spec na, na meron tayo. So parang meron tayong sample molecule. Tapos i-ionize natin. So, ano mangyayari doon? Nasa ionized form yung mga molecule tapos dadaan yun sa mass analyzer. So, ano nangyayari sa mass analyzer? Pwede silang i-filter at i-arrange from the lower mo uh, molecular weight to the highest molecular weight. At once nag nagamit yun, saka ka makukuha doon, makikita doon sa detector. Okay? So, we have here Anong compound to? Anyone? This is what? Familiar ba sa inyo yung compound na to? 
that is an acetone, right? So, if we're going to look at the sample here in the acetone, pag minaspect mo yan, ito yung lalabas. Okay, so makikita nyo dito sa horizontal, nandyan yung mass to charge ions niya. Tapos dito sa vertical line, nandyan yung relative intensity. So usually, makikita nyo do, yung merong tinatawag na 100% relative intensity, yun yung base peak. And if you're going to look at the base peak, it has a mass to charge ion that is equals to 43. Okay? And it is higher than your so-called molecular ion peak. So your molecular ion peak is what? Mass to charge equals to 58. Ano yung molar mass ng acetone? Anyone? So if you have your C, 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 so tatlong C, that's 12. So that's 36. Right? Plus 16. That's 52. C, 36 plus oxygen, that's 16. And then you have 6. So ano siya? 58. Tama ba? Yes, po. Okay? So makikita mo yung 58 na yun na dito. So that pertains to this one. Now, if it's a positive mode, okay, meron ka rin peak na dasa M plus 1. So yung M yan, yan yung molar mass. Yan yung 58. So meron ka sa 59. But as you can see here, ma may mas mataas na relative intensity nandoon sa 43. And you ask yourself, ano yun? Okay? So based on this one, ano yung naputol? It, ito yung uh, corresponding na 43, na wala ka ng methyl group. At makikita mo na yung methyl group mo nalabas dito. Anong molar mass to? If you're going to do it, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that's 12 plus 3, right? So that's the 15. So makikita nyo, yung corresponding fragment na nag-form is just the molar mass ng mga fragment doon sa uh, fragment ng buong part ng acetone. So that's the that's how they do this so-called structural elucidation. Para ang detective kinitingnan mo. Okay? Now, if you're doing quantitative analysis, ano yung kailangan mo para ma-compare yung amount yung tar nung target analyte mo, you need a what? Whenever we do quantitative analysis, we always need a standard. And then we put standard of known concentration, titignan mo yung signal, and then yung sample mo, titignan mo yung corresponding signal doon, i-compare mo doon sa standard mo. That's how we do quantitative analysis. Okay, and then I have another one here. So this is uh, ethyl bromide. And as you could see here, okay, pwede siyang ito. So sa ethyl bromide, uh, uh, paano yung pag take down dito? So you have here a corresponding number around what, 110? Okay. So meron din tinatawag na 109 or 108. So it has something to do with kung ano yung isotope na meron ka. So that uh, isotope that you have, it can break down to give you uh, uh, a bromine 81 or a bromine 79. But the fragment that you have here is this one. So ibig sabihin, kapag may fragment kayo ng ganyan, ito yung mag-break.
So usually ganun yung way na ginagawa doon sa uh, mass spectra when you try to determine the molecular uh, into the, uh, determination. So you can also do it like that one. So this whole molecules that you have here, okay? So it's around 43, it's 16 plus 15 plus 12. So if you're going to look at the fragment that form, okay? It could be this one or this one or that one. So, so, so fragmentation, so charge fragment. So if you're going to look at this, they found out that among the fragments, 77 is a stable. Okay. And 77 is what? Yung ba yung molar mass nito? What you have here? 6 times 12 is equals to? And then 6 times 12? 72. 72. Okay. And if you're going to look at this 72, okay, and then ilan yung hydrogen dito? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So yung 77 na meron ka, most likely ito. Okay. Now, another way we can look at it is if we have this. So they found out that you have a mass peak at 49 okay, and 51 or a mass peak of 35 and 37. So hindi nila na-observe ito. So ibig sabihin, hindi nila ma-observe ito. But they will always observe this one. Which corresponds to 49 or 51 depending on the isotope okay so the presence of ions also depends on their stability chloride uh, is not electronegative so hard to form a cation okay so usually in the gas space that we have ganito yung fragmentation na meron ka so this is one that has a molar mass of 226. Usually, seldom you see, okay, uh, yung buong to. And the way that you're going to look is if you have a soft and a hard source. Ito, ito yung tinatawag na ionization technique. So pag sinabi natin hard, ano ibig sabihin yan? Most likely, your, your molecule will break down. Pag sinasabi natin soft, hindi masyadong mag-break down yan. So as you could see here, so these are the same compound, okay? So doon sa soft, ionization source, intact yung 2 to 6 plus 1. But in a hard ionization source, like electron ionization, it fragment. So, so yun yung, yung ipig sabihin nito. And I'm going to discuss about this soft and hard uh, ionization next meeting. Okay, uh, you can also have like uh, this molecular uh, determination. Okay, so ano yung difference ng 106 sa 91? So it's just one methyl, right? 106 minus 91 is equal to what? 15, which is equal to this one. Now we have an experiment on this BTEX. Okay, and the way that I ask a student is look at the fragmentation. And then we can also have like the fragmentations of this to determine the molar mass. So, titignan mo lang ano yung percentage no carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Uh, ang gusto kong example na ibigay dito, ito yung experience na nagamit ko. So, this is the ion trap that you're going to know about next week. And this is just this, what we call the quadruple mass spec. So this is for quality and this is for quantity. And you experience in using the ion trap, I try to identify something when I mix with the activated sludge and glutathione. Alam nyo ba yung glutathione? Di ba sikat sa Pinas yun? Saan ginagamit yung glutathione dyan?
Ha? Ginagamit pa ba yung glute tayo yung pamputi? <laughs> Pampaputi? <laughs> But glute tayo is what we call a tripeptide that uh, is a very good stress uh, chemical. So kapag nag-apply na something foreign material doon sa system, yung glutathione ang mag-act doon and they are present in bacteria. Okay? So ano namin, meron kaming nakikita na 433. And then when we break it down, okay, yung 433 nagpo-form ng 144 at 187. Ganyan ito yung fragmentations na nakikita. Uh, uh, wala pala dito yung fragmentation. But ito yung nakikita namin fragment. And I try to deduce them. And the other study that I do is we have this, this is already, uh, maybe this one is the untarget or untargeted. At ito naman yung tinatawag natin targeted because we know, or I know what I'm looking for. So I'm looking for uh, tetracycline and chlorotetracycline. So I know the tetracycline to have 445, but it fragment to 427. So using this structure, ano kaya nawawala from 445 to 427? Anyone? Ano yung nawawala? Pag tinignan nyo dito. And the same thing if you have 462 going to 444. Anong compound yung nawawala? Okay, chlorine ba? Walang chlorine dito sa isa. Ang iniisip namin nawawala dyan ay water or an OH group. Does it make sense? Na a hydroxyl group is the one that may come uh, what we call the loss between 445 and 427. Okay? So, yan yung experience ko on what we call uh, mass spec. And next week, pupunta tayo doon sa details. Okay? So, yung quiz nyo, ganito. So, doon sa iba na wala, wala ngayon dito. So, by tomorrow, at this time, meron ng yung module 4.1. Okay? I will try to make it available by tonight yan sa inyo okay it may you might uh, what we could get the link even before 12 okay and then after that yung 4.2 and then after that yung 4.3 and then after that yung 4.4 and as promised you have what five questions, uh, maybe multiple choice or true or false, and then you have, uh, we're giving you 30 minutes to answer it. So, tanong. May tanong? May natutunan ba kayo sa maano, sa KKP? I think I can share to you you. Nakapunta ba kayo doon sa kanilang, ano ba yun, beach ba yun? Pinagastasan ata nila yung maigi eh. Now, I would suggest, since lahat kayo, kung paano man yung thesis na gagawin nyo, uh, I, I want you to go, teka, isi-share ko sa inyo, I, ho I hope you're able to uh, go here in this uh, what we call site yeah the beach front like this one so pag pumunta kayo dito kita nyo to poster hall do you see what, what i'm seeing right now so here Most of these are just, I, I, I think, BS thesis. And, and usually before, when I was still teaching there, I asked my student, 
at least pagka-graduate nila, mag-present sila dito. Why? Para at least gumanda yung kanilang CV. They can always what we call include this in their CV. And that's what I usually do with my students. Okay? Uh, inaano ko sila. Uh, I, I continue practicing that tradition when I came here to the Philippines. So here, if you're looking for an advisor, meron na kayong idea ano yung mga study na ginagawa nila. Like this one. And I don't know if it's still like uh, uh, before, kasi I remember my last semester, in my fifth year, I'm a BS Agricultural Chemistry, thesis na lang yung ginagawa ko. Sometimes yung thesis yung nagpapa-delay sa graduation mo. Okay? So ito yung ano. And just to show you what I'm doing, at least here, So I usually have my students presenting okay, in different uh, conference. At kung ano man yung presentation nila, they can put there in their CV. So that's the reason why uh, I invited you to at least watch or at least attend the KKT. It's just giving you a glimpse on your future. Okay? Question. So I hope you're able to attend. Okay. Kung napanood nyo man yung presentation ko, well, it's up to you. <laughs> you as my student, you'll be the judge for that. <laughs> but uh, as I told you, it's uh, really difficult uh, yung situation ninyo kaysa doon sa situation ng mga student dito. And right now, we are, uh, I don't know, we have a new problem. Hindi namin alam kung bakit ganyan yung mga student dito. Para silang mga zombie na nasa harap ng laptop all the time na nakasanayan when they were online. Okay? So, to now, so tomorrow we will have our Thanksgiving Day here. It's an annual uh, what we call tradition. Ang ano nga dito, saka mo lang gagamitin uh, ita, yung, i, ano yung Christmas tree mo after ng Thanksgiving. 